Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 10th of February. Rescue operations gather pace to search survivors of India's Uttarakhand glacier tragedy. USA is closely monitoring situation along India-China border. And top Afghan peace official Abdullah slams Taliban for avoiding negotiations. And now for all the details. Rescue operations continued on Wednesday to search for survivors trapped in a tunnel in India's northern Uttarakhand state after a glacier breach sent a torrent of water, rock and dust hurtling down a mountain valley. Around 200 people remained uncounted for since Sunday's disaster. Rescue operations gathered pace on Wednesday in Chamoli district of India's northern Uttarakhand state to search for at least 35 construction workers believed to be trapped in a tunnel since a surge of water and debris swept down a mountain valley destroying dams and bridges. Some 204 people remain unaccounted for since Sunday's disaster. Most of them workers at the Tapovan Vishnugarh hydroelectric project at Rishi Ganga, a smaller dam which was swept away in the flood. So far, rescuers have retrieved the bodies of at least 32 people from mountain sites and further downstream, the Dholi Ganga River, police said. Uh, जितना हम एक्सकवेट कर रहे हैं उससे ज्यादा मलबा वहां से आगे से आ रहा है तो इसलिए आपको लग रहा होगा कि वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस मतलब हॉरिजॉन्टल डिस्टेंस कम ही है पर वास्तविकता यह है कि जितना आप वहां पे उठा रहे लोडर और एक्सकवेटर उससे ज्यादा मलबा वहीं पे आ रहा है इसलिए आगे बढ़ने का डिस्टेंस उतना ही है लेकिन हमें वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस काफी मिला है एक्सपर्ट सेड इट हैड स्नोड हेविली लास्ट वीक इन द नंदा देवी एरिया एंड इट वाज पॉसिबल दैट सम ऑफ द स्नो हैड स्टार्टेड मेल्टिंग एंड मे हैव लेड टू अ ग्लेशियर एवलांच the disaster is the worst to hit the state since 2013 Kedarnath floods, which killed more than 5,000 people. The United States has expressed concern over Beijing's attempts to intimidate neighbours and supported a peaceful resolution to the India-China border standoff. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price during a press briefing on Tuesday said that the United States is closely monitoring the situation along the India-China border. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price during a press briefing on Tuesday expressed concerns over Beijing's pattern of ongoing attempts to intimidate its neighbors and said that Washington is closely monitoring the situation along the India-China border. Price also assured India of its support on the matter without directly making a reference. India and Chinese troops have been locked in a bitter border standoff in eastern Ladakh since early May last year. The standoff has continued since the clashes in eastern Ladakh in June that left 20 Indian soldiers dead. Both India and China have accused each other of crossing into rival territory and of firing shots for the first time in 45 years. Well, we're uh, closely monitoring um, the situation. Uh, we note uh, the ongoing talks uh, between the governments of India and China and we continue to support direct dialogue. Uh, and a peaceful resolution of uh, those border disputes. Uh, we are concerned by Beijing's pattern of ongoing attempts to intimidate uh, its neighbors. Um, as always, we'll stand with friends, we'll stand with partners, we'll stand with allies uh, to advance our shared prosperity, security uh, and values uh, in, in this case, the Indo-Pacific. In the ninth round of military talks last month, India and China agreed to push for an early disengagement of troops and resolved to continue effective efforts to stabilize and control the situation in eastern Ladakh. Moving on, microblogging platform Twitter has started blocking accounts flagged by Indian government for allegedly spreading misinformation and provocative content in connection with the protest by farmers against new farm laws. However, no action has been taken against accounts of news media entities, journalists, activists, politicians. The Vidhal accounts continue to be available outside India. 
Microblogging platform Twitter on Wednesday said it has acted on several blocking requests from the government of India in the past 10 days, but it has not taken any action on news media entities, journalists, activists and politicians as it believes that doing so would violate their fundamental right to free expression under Indian law. In a blog post, Twitter said it took a range of enforcement measures, including permanent suspension in certain cases, against more than 500 accounts escalated across all Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology orders for clear violations of Twitter rules. The controversy revolves around farmers' protests, which turned violent on 26 January Republic Day celebrations, shortly after which the government asked Twitter to take action against over 250 Twitter handles as they were inciting genocide. Some accounts the government said are backed by arch-rival Pakistan or are operated by supporters of separatist Sikh movement Khalistan. Though some accounts were suspended, some were restored after a few hours following which the centre nursed Twitter once again and warned of penal action. Meanwhile, India's technology ministry said the blog post preceded a planned meeting between its most senior official and Twitter executives that had been organised after a request from the company. The government will share its response soon, it added. Tens of thousands of farmers have camped on the outskirts of capital New Delhi for months, demanding the withdrawal of new agriculture laws, they say, benefit private buyers at the expense of growers. The government says the reforms open up new opportunities for farmers. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari hit out at the government over rising inflation and allegedly usurping the rights of provinces while addressing a massive rally by the Opposition Alliance on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Pakistan Democratic Movement Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman said they will soon get rid of COVID-18 in a jibe at PM Imran Khan-led government which came into power in 2018. Pakistan People's Party Chairperson Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Tuesday once again hit out at the government over inflation and allegedly usurping the rights of provinces, saying Prime Minister Imran Khan had promised a naya or new Pakistan, but it turned out to be more expensive Pakistan. Speaking to a massive rally of Opposition Alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement in Pakistan Sindh province, Bilawal said puppet and selected PM Imran Khan had refused to accept Sindh as his province and only wanted its resources. Meanwhile, Pakistan Democratic Movement Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman said that the opposition alliance will soon get rid of COVID-18 in a jibe at PM Imran Khan's government which came into power in 2018. He appealed for a mass gathering in PDM's long march against the government on March 26 and announced that the opposition parties in the alliance will be contesting the upcoming Senate elections jointly. In news from Afghanistan, Head of Afghan High Council for National Reconciliation Abdullah Abdullah on Tuesday slammed the Taliban for avoiding negotiations in Doha as talks remain stalled for over three weeks due to their absence. This comes as the level of violence in Afghanistan has remained high with the recent rise in attacks on government employees. Head of Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, on Tuesday criticized the Taliban for their distance from the negotiating table, saying that their absence has stalled the talks for over three weeks. Abdullah, addressing a gathering to introduce a media commission at the council, said the Taliban's absence from the negotiation table has affected the hopes for peace in the country. 
The second round of peace negotiations between the negotiating teams of Afghan government and the Taliban resumed on January 6, and only three meetings at the working group level were held. However, no meeting has been reportedly held for the last 23 days. The Taliban has recently been busy on trips to Iran, Russia and Turkmenistan seeking support for the implementation of the February 2020 US-Taliban agreement as part of peace negotiations. This comes as the level of violence in Afghanistan has remained high. On Sunday, a car bombing in Nangarhar province targeting an Afghan police check post killed at least one soldier. In the latest, capital Kabul witnessed three separate explosions on Wednesday, killing at least two people and wounding several. Moving on to news from Nepal. With growing rage against the dissolution of the lower house of Nepal parliament, caretaker Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli met Chief Election Commissioner on Tuesday urging him to expedite preparations for the elections slated in the coming months. Oli's visit to the election commission comes after the cabinet decided to conduct polls in 40 districts on April 30 and 37 districts on May 10. A faction under the leadership of former Prime Ministers Pushp Kamal Dehil and Madhav Kumar Nepal has practically broken off from the Oli alliance but has been denied recognition from the electoral body. The rival faction of the ruling Nepal Communist Party which has been hitting the road since December 20, after Oli dissolved the parliament, has been staging show of power. As part of its second phase of protest against Oli's move, the Hell Nepal faction on Wednesday took out rallies from various parts of Kathmandu, which later converged for a mass meeting. A news from Sri Lanka. As coronavirus inoculations for frontline health workers are underway in Sri Lanka, the island nation of 22 million people has reported over 71,200 infections with 370 deaths in total. Sri Lanka received 500,000 Covid-19 vaccines for free from India late last month. Officials have said the vaccination drive for the general public will begin in the first week of March as the government plans to buy 3 million doses from the Serum Institute of India. Education Minister Professor G.L. Paris said on Tuesday that a decision has been taken to reopen all schools in the island for all grades from March 15th. Tourism Minister Prasanna Ranatunga claimed Sri Lanka will become the safest country in the world free of COVID for tourists by May as the vaccination drive is expected to be completed by that time. The Indian Army has trained dogs for detecting COVID-19 cases by smelling urine and sweat samples for a quick and a real-time situation for easier movements of troops. These canines have been deployed at transit camps in northern India. Indian Army is training dogs to detect COVID-19 cases in its ranks after smelling human sweat and urine in a bid to battle the spread of the virus, a senior army official said on Tuesday. Breeds such as Cocker Spaniels, Chippiparai and Labradors are being trained to sniff out the odor that comes from cells in infected people at the training facility in capital city, New Delhi. Several countries across the globe were considering canine detectors to identify the novel coronavirus at airports and public spaces. But in India, the defence forces would be the first to use sniper dogs, the official said. Uh, Army dogs have uh, recently been used for detection of COVID-19 infection. Uh, we are using indigenous breed Chippi Parai, uh, which has been trained on uh, the urine samples. We are also using uh, Cocker Spaniels and Labradors. Focus panels have been trained on the sweat samples and laboratories also, uh, also we are using uh, urine samples. At least eight dogs were being trained to be deployed at transit camp in northern India from where troops moved to high security border areas as using sniper dogs would be help in quicker detection of the disease and reduce dependence on tests in remote locations. India has recorded the second highest number of coronavirus cases in the world after the United States but daily numbers have fallen since hitting a peak September last year. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline.
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.